In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. All praise to Allah and may his peace and blessings be on his messenger, Muhammad. Let us begin by asking ourselves this question. Have we submitted and surrendered to Allah Almighty? Unfortunately, it has become a habit for everyone who hears this question to immediately reply without a second thought. Of course I have submitted and surrendered to Allah then that person would even wonder to himself, does this question even need to be asked or even answered? Yes, surely yes. This question is very vital and needs soul searching and an answer. The proof of this is in what Allah the Most Gracious said in the Holy Quran about Ibrahim, peace be on him, after he had chosen him as a messenger to the people. Allah the Most Gracious said, and who would turn away from the religion of Ibrahim except one who makes a fool of himself? For we had chosen him in this world, and indeed he in the hereafter will be among the righteous. When his Lord said to him, Submit, he said, I have submitted to the Lord of the worlds. This was a verse from Surah Al-Baqarah. See how Allah emphasizes submission only to him, otherwise one makes a fool of himself. This is also reflected in the final words of advice that both Ibrahim and Yaqub, peace be on them both, left to their children. These words are related to us in the Quran, also in Surah Al-Baqarah. And this was the legacy of Ibrahim left to his sons, and so did Yaqub. O oh my sons, Allah has chosen the religion for you, so die not except as those who submit to Allah. So see again, Ibrahim and Yaqub are telling us, die not except as those who submit to Allah. This was the same lesson that the messenger Muhammad, peace be on him, was trying to convey when he asked one of his companions, Haritha. So one morning the messenger asked Haritha, how's your day, Haritha? Haritha replied, I woke up a true believer. Then the messenger, who would not take these words at face value, responded to Haritha, the messenger said, Look into what you are saying, for every truth has its manifestation. So what is the manifestation of your belief? So when Hanith claimed he woke up as a believer, the messenger immediately challenged him, saying, Look into what you are saying, for every truth has its manifestation. So what is the manifestation of your belief? Muhammad wasallam, has said only the truth. For every truth must have its manifestation. So we should look deep into ourselves. We should look ourselves in the mirror and ask ourselves. When you rush to answer and reply that you are truly submitting and surrendering to Allah, have you looked into what you have said? Have you any proof to this hasty claim? Did we look into the real truth of what we say? Because speaking lofty words and mentioning high principles or morals are worthless unless these words are sincerely applied in real life and become truly manifest. So let us judge ourselves. How do we live with ourselves when we do not care to do what Allah commands us and we commit what He has forbidden us in our homes, at work, with our neighbors, relatives, and friends? Can we honestly say that we truly submit and surrender to Allah when we don't care to obey Him in all matters? How can we live in a society that does not uphold the law of Allah and allows transgression of his mandates, and yet we do not reject this life and make no attempt to change it? Instead, we accept it. So how can we still claim that we are submitting and surrendering to Allah? How can a Muslim think that he can disobey his Lord's teachings and then cheat, lie, or betray, or transgress the limits set by Allah, or to accept forbidden prophet? How can a Muslim woman think that she can disobey her Lord's teachings and go, go out of the house, almost uncovered, exposing her body to the public? How can we fool ourselves into thinking that as long as there is so-called good intention in our hearts, this is more than enough, and this would excuse us from fulfilling our responsibilities and duties? 
After all this disobedience and inconsideration, how can we stay, still say, Yes, of course, I am truly submitting to Allah. How do the concept of submitting and surrendering to Allah in all parts of our daily lives, whether it is public or private, whether we are male or female, rulers or common people, how did submitting to Allah get reduced to only performing a few ceremonial rituals? When someone asks us, are you truly submitting to Allah? We sometimes and sometimes angrily respond, yes, of course. Then we say, don't you see that we are saying there is no deity but Allah or la ilaha illallah? And we pray and we fast and we go to Hajj. So if we are serious, so if we are serious, we must understand what is the true meaning of submission and surrender to Allah. What is submission and surrender as Allah wishes and approves? Everyone must know that Islam is not only the declaration that there is no deity but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger, but also the fulfillment and application of these great words. Because Islam is comprised of both word and action. Just as Allah is the one and only deity without any associates in his creation, he is also the master without any associates in his domain. Therefore, the master and creator of everything has the right to choose for his creation the way they shall live their lives. Allah is the only one who has a right to command because he is the creator. Allah has declared in the Quran, his is the creation and the command. So no one is truly submitting or surrendering to Allah unless he or she follows the way Allah has intended for them. As Allah has said, it is he who is the deity in the heavens and the deity on earth, and he is the all-wise and the all-knowing. Everyone knows the truth of what we have stated above. However, what most people do not realize is that ruling with what Allah has commanded is actually the most important representation of surrendering and submitting to Allah, just as it is stated in the Quran. The command is none for but Allah. He has commanded that you worship none but Him. That is the right religion, but most people understand not. This is why the Qur'an defines the rulers who do not rule with what Allah has commanded as disbelievers in Allah, tyrants and transgressors. This is a very serious matter, because refusing the commandments of Allah, even in the little things, is really the same as refusing the whole religion of Allah. This is because the way of Allah intended for us must be taken as a whole and cannot be divided. Whenever one rejects a com component of the law of Allah or expresses disapproval or attempts to exchange it for laws of his own making, then it is clear transgression upon the authority of Allah on earth and a rejection of his divinity. This is in effect a complete departure from the submission and surrender to Allah. We should note that this does not apply to human errors that inevitably occur, as a sincere believer is quick to repent. An example of this is when Adam, the first human being and the first messenger, may, be, may Allah's peace be on him, ate from the forbidden tree, and Allah asked, Did I not forbid you from that tree and tell you that Satan is to you a clear enemy? Then Adam replied, we have wronged ourselves, and if you do not forgive us and have mercy upon us, we will surely be among the losers. Allah then forgave him, and Adam received from his Lord's words, and he accepted his repentance. Indeed, it is he who is accepting of repentance, the merciful. This is the conversation that took place between the most merciful Allah and Adam, who made a mistake and was quick to repent. And this is what's related to us in the Qur'an. Then look at the prime example of disobedience, Satan. Satan disobeyed Allah when he was asked to bow to Adam, but he refused. Then instead of repenting, he arrogantly rejected the command of Allah. Satan boasted, as it is related in the Qur'an, I am not one to prostrate myself to a man whom you created from sounding clay and shaped from mud. So Allah punished him for his refusal and exclaimed, Get out of paradise, rejected and expelled. 
Whoever follows you among them, I will surely fill hell with you all together. So we see why Satan was rejected and condemned, because he refused to obey. So let us follow the example of Adam, who repented and lovingly obeyed his lords, and not that of Satan, who refused to submit. So we must really understand that there is no value in claiming submission and surrender to Allah just by declaring the words of the Shahada, or the great testimony or declaration of faith, La ilaha illallah, or there is no divinity except Allah, without really understanding the meaning of these words and applying its consequences in our lives. Submission and surrender to Allah is not by mere words, but through sincere action and obedience. And finally, we praise Allah, the Lord of the Lords.